Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the balloon boy hoax that occurred in Colorado in October of 2009? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. This case primarily involves three members of the Heaney family who lived in Colorado during the time of the incident. 48-year-old Richard Heaney, 45-year-old Mayumi Heaney, they were a married couple, and 6-year-old Falcon Heaney. The couple also had two other sons who were not really involved in this incident. The couple met in Hollywood, California when they were in acting school and would marry in 1997. Richard had a number of different jobs and career aspirations. He was a stand-up comic for a while, a handyman, a storm chaser, and a UFO hunter. In February 2009, a domestic violence investigation was initiated because Mayumi had been observed with broken blood vessels in her left eye and some type of mark on her cheek. No charges resulted from the investigation. On two occasions, the couple was featured on the show Wife Swap. Their second appearance was because they were selected as a fan favorite. On that show, Richard would say that he wanted to launch homemade flying saucers into storms, and he thought that human beings were descended from aliens. Around that same time, he had put together a proposal for a reality show called The Science Detectives. He viewed it as a documentary series that would investigate the mysteries of science. It makes sense to me why science would be a mystery to Richard Heaney. Richard tried to convince the television channel TLC to produce the series, but they declined to get involved. Apparently, the producer of Wife Swap was considering featuring the family in a new show, like a separate show, but the whole balloon incident deflated that deal. At his home in Fort Collins, Colorado, Richard had constructed a helium balloon out of plastic tarps and aluminum foil that was 20 feet in diameter and about 5 feet high. It kind of looked like a flying saucer. At the bottom of the balloon, there was this box made of plywood and cardboard. It was supposed to be some type of battery box. This takes us to the day of the incident. On October 15, 2009, Richard and his wife launched this balloon into the atmosphere. It's not really clear what happened, but Richard tried to make it seem as though the balloon was tied to the ground and would simply ascend a few feet in the air, like they were conducting some type of experiment. A home video captured the incident. As the balloon started to float higher than intended, family members started screaming. Richard kicks the wood frame that supported the balloon, and he blames somebody for not securing the tether. Falcon is not featured in the video, so there's this idea that perhaps he was in the balloon as it floated away. Richard called the FAA, who in turn called the local NBC station and asked if they could dispatch a helicopter to chase the balloon. Mayumi Heaney called 911 to report that her son was in a homemade flying saucer. Maybe she was trying to distinguish that from one of those big corporate flying saucers. Moments later, Richard started talking to the dispatcher. He indicated that Falcon was definitely in the balloon. As the authorities and the local news chased the balloon, it traveled 60 miles and reached an altitude of 7,000 feet. It disrupted air travel but the original reports that the Denver International Airport was briefly closed were not true. The balloon landed 15 miles east of that airport. The authorities were right there when it landed, but they did not find Falcon in the balloon. They searched the ground over which the balloon had floated, thinking maybe he fell out, but again, they could not locate him. Falcon was found in the family home around 4 p.m. when he walked into the house. He had been hiding in a cardboard box in the rafters above the garage. He said that he had been hiding there because he thought that his father would be mad at him for trying to get into the battery compartment of the balloon earlier that day. The authorities started to wonder if this could have been a hoax, but more evidence in the form of two interviews would help them reach a more definitive position. During the first interview, when Falcon was asked why he was hiding, he said to his father, you guys said that we did this for the show. Richard scrambled during the interview to figure out what to say. It was like he was in shock. He made up something and just glossed over the fact that Falcon exposed the entire scam 
in that moment. During an interview the next day, Falcon vomited twice, once when he was asked about his comment from before, and once when his father asked him about it. Richard Heaney was getting an important lesson on why it's a bad idea to pull a six-year-old into a criminal enterprise. Even though the authorities were starting to become suspicious, the sheriff initially said that the suggestion that the boy could have been coached to hide seemed inconceivable. The boy hid because he believed he was responsible for the balloon becoming untied. So here we see that the sheriff is using a different story than Falcon had originally said. Now the sheriff would later explain that he said it was inconceivable that this was a hoax to maintain the trust of the Heenies. Now this may or may not be true, but I'll give the sheriff the benefit of the doubt. For a moment there, I was starting to wonder what it would take for this sheriff to believe someone was actually guilty. Like when he pulls people over for speeding, he talks himself out of issuing the ticket. So he would walk up to the driver's door after pulling somebody over, and the driver would say, Officer, I wasn't speeding. And the sheriff would rip up the ticket and say, I'm way ahead of you. On October 18, in reference to the Heenies, the sheriff suggested that the incident was a hoax designed in order for the family to market themselves for a reality show. The sheriff said that charges would be filed. Mayumi would later admit that she knew all along that Falcon was hiding in the house. The police said that Richard and Mayumi instructed their three children to lie to the authorities and to the media. Mayumi had also created some type of journal where in an entry dated on October 14, one day before the incident, she described a plan that Richard had to have Falcon hide in the basement when the balloon was released in order to attract the attention of the media. In that same journal, in an entry dated October 18, she indicated that she believed Richard came down to the basement to look for Falcon, thinking the plan was being executed. So on October 15, Richard went down the basement but couldn't find Falcon. When Richard didn't see him there, Richard really thought Falcon was in the flying saucer. So they were planning a hoax, and then the events that they were pretending were going to happen actually happened. So even when caught in a lie, we see a journal entry that tries to explain that lie with an even more nonsensical lie. Many years later, Mayumi would say that she made up the journal entries. Richard never had a plan to have Falcon hide in the basement. So there's really just no end to the deception. This is like trying to escape a sinking boat by punching more holes in it. Charges were filed against the Heenies. Richard would plead guilty to attempting to influence a public servant. This is a felony. He was sentenced to 90 days in jail. Mayumi was convicted of false reporting to authorities, which is a misdemeanor. She was sentenced to 20 days in jail. Richard would later suggest that his wife felt pressured to confess because she was afraid of being deported to Japan. Richard maintains that he is innocent. The incident was not a hoax. The governor of Colorado pardoned both Richard and Mayumi Heaney on December 23, 2020. Richard was unable to get a contractor's license in Florida, where the family now lived, because he was a felon. The pardon cleared the way for him to get that license. The governor said that the Heaney's had paid the price in the eyes of the public. In their application for the pardon, the Heenies did not admit the incident was a hoax. Moving to my analysis. Richard Heaney has been described as creative, eccentric, and a shameless self-promoter. He appears to be excitement-seeking, manipulative, and attention-seeking. He also appears to have a lot of self-confidence. He believes himself highly capable in a number of areas. What I find amazing about Richard Heaney is that he still blames everybody else. The sheriff, the media... He maintains that he is the victim here, and he is stuck by the story that he is innocent, even after pleading guilty to a felony and apologizing to the community. Around the time of the incident, he blamed the sheriff for filing charges against him, suggesting that the sheriff was in search of 15 minutes of fame. I think it would be more accurate to say Richard was concerned the sheriff was stealing Richard's 15 minutes of fame. This is like a person trying to steal a car and being mad because another thief steals it first. As far as blaming the media, Richard claims that they never took his side. So that was his complaint about the media coverage, that they were trying to be fair and not 
just siding with him. Now, in looking at the situation as far as the pardon, I've never really seen a compelling argument for a permanent criminal record. It probably protects some people from certain offenders, but it does way more harm than good. Therefore, I'm fine with the idea of Richard and Mayumi being pardoned. The part I find hard to believe is that they received a pardon without accepting responsibility. That is exceptionally rare. It actually goes against the rationale behind a pardon. I think what's really worrisome in this case has little to do with the criminal justice system or the pardon, rather has more to do with Richard's continued deceptive behavior. Any reasonable person in Richard's position would know that nobody believes his lies. Why does he keep trying to deceive people? Why not take responsibility and admit that this was a hoax? I don't know the answer to this question, but I have to wonder if it's not a combination of hope and a lack of empathy. Perhaps for Richard, the dream of fame is still alive. If he admits that he committed the felony to which he pleaded guilty, maybe he believes that no one would ever give him a chance at fame. As far as the people who were victimized, for example, the taxpayers who had to pay for an unnecessary search and rescue effort, Richard seems to have little interest or understanding about the harm he caused them. Are there any lessons learned in this case? I have one that I want to cover. Some people are defined by a criminal act and redefined by their failure to own their behavior. In a sense, society locked them in a cell, but after their release, they metaphorically put themselves back in that cell and locked it from the inside with their own lack of empathy and desire to escape responsibility. Those are my thoughts on the Balloon Boy hoax. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. I hope that you found my analysis of this topic to be enlightening. Thanks for watching.